thing I dive with one of our key bits of equipment, my float boat. Got a pouch on the top cover there, I can put some spare bits and pieces, get that in the water and get that set up for my dive buddy. Or she tells me a few stories of past dives. I'm going to take my flood float, just so we know where each other are, and then we can always see each other if we're looking for each other. Of course, a common problem, untangling float lines that weren't caught up properly from the last dive. One of my favourite things to do. Today I'm going to be using a real gun. These are becoming more and more popular in New Zealand because they give you so much freedom of movement so you don't have to have your float line attached. I've set up my 120 here, my 120 carbon with my reel on it. It means that if I need to I can disconnect my float line and fight the fish with the reel. In the water we met with great visibility. Plenty of reef fish here. Beautiful. Didn't take long to spot a mob of snapper sitting here. Just going to test out the range on, the, on my longer gun as I haven't used it for a while. First up, a miss. It pays to take a few long shots just to get used to the, the range on your gun. Because subconsciously you'll start picking it up through the dive and then you'll be able to gauge the distance with fish a little bit better. Here's a perfect looking rock. Demoiselles all around it, beautiful and clear. And you can see the lights coming from behind my back, which is a really important part when you're hunting snapper. As I'm taking my time coming over here, because it looks like such a good spot, a common sign, you see a poor eye sitting where you think the big snapper should be sitting. Onto another great bommy. I make my dive far away from the rock so I don't spook anything on the other side. I want to sneak over slowly here and I'm just going to peer all around the edges. You really want to try and take your time if you can when you come to a really nice rock like this. With the clear water this can sometimes make hunting snapper quite difficult because they'll see you from a long way away. So it's really important to use the sun. Right here I spot a snapper just sitting out in the bottom of the gutter out there. It's too far away. But you want to watch their body language and just see what they're doing. And I'm keeping an eye on the snapper. Even though the GoPro's up high, I've got my head right down near the kelp. I'm just waiting for it to settle and try and close that distance. As I drift down, what you can't see is I'm not thinning. You want to try and drift down and glide towards a fish. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And as it takes a movement, I try and take a long shot and connect. It's not a great shot, but this is when the reel comes into play. So you see how it's pulling line from the reel and I'm holding onto the gun. This is the idea of using a reel on your gun. It means I don't have to have the float line attached and I can, don't have to let the gun go. I don't want to put too much pressure on this fish because it was a long shot and not a great shot. I'm sitting on the surface here and I'm actually holding the reel with my hand, using it like a sort of a clutch so I don't let too much line out. You don't want the snapper free spooling. Now that it's tangled up in the kelp, an important part, especially with a reel like this, is I want to keep it, the tension on. It's like a hook. If you let go too much slack, the flopper can close and the fish could get off. So I'm still holding my line here, keeping the pressure on. Get hold of the fish here. I've grabbed its tail. And then the next thing I want to do is try and get my hands in its gills. Back on the surface, I'm able to secure the fish. The shot was actually not too bad, and it did go all the way through. But it does pay to be careful, especially with snapper that can tear big holes in themselves. I bleed my fish as I always do. And now I'll run you through reloading a real gun. If you've got a real gun and you've used one plenty of the times, you can fast forward to some more snapper action later in the video. But this is how you're putting a reel back together. When you fight a fish with a reel on your gun, you don't actually wind it in like a reel you use on a fishing rod. See all the lines all slack, and I want to reel the line when it's slack back into the reel. So I put the spear back in, I'm making sure the mono's in the correct place. And what I'm going to do here, is I'm going to get the reel line between my fingers, and I'm going to reel it back in, holding a little bit of tension so it's nice and firm back on the reel. And I'm spreading the reel line across the... Um, drum of the reel with my fingertips. You want to make sure your reel line of your reel is always nice and neat. You don't want it to be loosely packed as it can jam. 
Also a handy thing is having a swivel on the end of the reel line like that to stop it from tangling up. Load my gun up again. And I've connected my float line back to my gun because my dive buddy's actually got my drop weight, which would be quite handy in this situation. So I've got the reel line back on my reel. I've tightened up the drag so it stays nice and taut. And it's time to carry on. Come to another really nice spot here. There's a lot of current and look at all the bait fish. It's a really, really good looking spot for a snapper. There is a bit of surge so I'm being careful as I'm coming over the rock not to get pushed over. And there is public enemy number one sitting on the other side, Silver Drummer. There's a really big school just sitting here really quietly. You will get snappers sitting with them quite often, but it's really important try to try and not spook them. They make an absolute racket and they just charge around scaring all the snapper away. I'm trying to sort of move back really quietly not to spook them. And I don't really manage to. They just take off and they make a hell of a racket. They're going to scare all the snapper and all the fish in the vicinity. It's exactly what I didn't want to do. Soon actually find a snapper swimming out wide of the rock. Most likely was sitting quietly until the drummer came blasting around. Try and make a quick dive on it using the sun at my back, but it's a bit smart for me. So let's give this another go. Come on the other side of the rock here. Oh, same again. There's a big school of drummer here and they make a hell of a racket as they take off. And there goes the snapper flying past my head. Don't be afraid to check right up in shallow. You see, I'm only in a couple of meters of water here. And I've got the sun in the right direction, but there's a snapper sitting up right in that gutter there. I've got to try and close the distance again. This is the bonus of having this longer carbon gun. I drift towards it quietly, and I do take a reasonably long shot as I don't want it to spoke. Fortunately with a shot it's in a better spot, so I can just sort of manhandle the fish back in without letting any of the real line run out. Snapper, especially in summertime, can be found right up in the shallows in areas like this, so don't be afraid going up and two meters of water three meters of water you don't need to be right out deep sometimes you shoot them without even diving see what i'm doing with the reel here i tighten it up and then i tighten up the drag because you don't want it to be too loose this is a really great reel it's got a really good drag system so it doesn't either free spool or tighten up you can actually keep a good drag system on it it's a really important part of a reel you don't want to have a terrible drag system that either free spools or tightens up as that just results in you losing fish or if it tightens up, you can lose your gun if you let it go. With my snapper on the float line, I, I want to make sure they're right near back there where my float is. You don't want to leave them halfway along the line, otherwise they get caught up on everything. Not long after I get picked up by the boat, they make me swim way offshore as they don't want me to go too close to the rocks. Got a couple of nice healthy snapper. A good first successful dive. Encouraged by that, we're back in the water. And I'm just showing my dive buddy here. She's got a drop weight in her left hand, and she's got a gun in her right hand. And this is a bonus of having a carbon gun and it being real as well. It means that she can hold it back with one hand with ease and can maneuver it. She doesn't have a big heavy gun. This is a much easier one. Nice close shot, riding shallow here. Same thing again, dispatch the fish, bleed the fish for good eating qualities. And it always pays to gut your fish before you get back to the boat too. I do find sometimes it's good not to gut your fish straight away so if you haven't pierced the gut cavity, they'll float on your float line and they'll really get caught on rocks when you're swimming along. So I'm going to leave the guts in this fish 
until I get closer back to the boat. So I'm threading it on my float line. Oh, I missed a knot. There's still a knot on my float line. I didn't put that there. This is a great thing about spear fishing. We don't have to just target one certain species. We can target all sorts of different species. And there's no bycatch. I noticed a whole lot of small fish hanging around in this channel here. It's sort of a flat, really broken, horrible ground, but there are fish that keep swimming up and down the channel. Here's some nice kohuru and there's some trevally coming in here. Just to mix up the bag, there's a couple of small trevally that come in. Especially smaller trevally, they make great eating. Perfect for sashimi or raw fish, but they can nice cook too. It's always nice to get a few of these smaller ones. Back down in the same spot. I'm only in maybe six meters of water here. It's really, really showing. There's a massive school of poor eye, which is a nice touch. And of course, in the area where there's fish, there's always more fish. So it does pay, even though I don't want to shoot any of these poor eye, there'll always be fish around with it. And here comes another trevally with the blue mau mau. I'll take that one too. Always keep your movement slow, nothing too quick. With a bad shot like this, sometimes it pays to grab the fish before you get back to the surface so it doesn't tear itself off, especially a small fish like this that can speed around and rip itself off the monofilament. Just before I get back to the boat, I actually spot a few more snapper and they come into this really, really nice gutter here. But off to my right, I see a couple of big kohuru come speeding past. And this is a bit of a tip. See how I don't track them? I wait for them to swim in front of my spear and anticipate where they're going to go and take a shot. Trying to track small little kohuru like this can be really, really difficult. And you can apply this to all fish, even big ones too, as they won't be so intimidated if you allow them to swim in front of you. While I was doing this, my dive buddy managed to get a really nice snapper parked up on the other side of this rock here, resting up. A really nice spot here, right next to the boat. Watch how she gets hold of this fish. Even though it's not a really big fish, this is exactly how you want to get control of it. She gets the tail between her legs and gets her hands in its gills. So she can stop it from thrashing around. With all this commotion, we brought another fish too, so that's why it always pays to keep an eye with your dive buddy when they shoot something, because you never know what else might come in. Quick couple of images, and then we're back down. I give her my spear gun, because a couple more trevally come in. She's not real impressed with her shot, but it's enough to get hold of it. Back from our second swim, we've got a bit more variety here. We've got some kohuru, some nice trevally, and still a couple more snapper. It's a really good start to our day. The visibility was beautiful, especially for this time of year when you often get a lot of algae bloom. We parked up just in the shallows here, but you can see there's a beautiful sandy bottom, flat, calm. And when I'm in there, I'm swimming along the shallow weed edge here, and it's beautiful, Viz. I swim along here in hope of seeing a bullfish, but instead, I spy a couple more small trevally. So we'll take that too. A 
It felt very tropical, the spot, with lots of visibility, lots of bait fish. Don't even need to go to overseas to get some nice tropical diving. And what did we see on the way back? But a turtle swimming behind the boat on the, on the bottom here. Dive buddy gets him for a close encounter. And the turtle soon decides that it's had enough of us harassing it and takes off into the shallows to eat some more seaweed. A good way to finish the day. 